So let's just get started right away with Ninetales here in Pokemon Unite. I think there's some things about her that aren't extremely intuitive, so hopefully this video will clear some things up and help make you a better Ninetales player or better at playing against Ninetales, because she can be tough to go against. So straight out the gate here, Ninetales has two different skills. She has Powder Snow and Icy Wind. So let's get her up to level three so we can see both of those here. What Powder Snow does is it shoots out an arc of snow, hits whoever's within that arc, and it causes that little snowflake to show up on top of their head. And let's talk about that snowflake, because you're gonna be seeing it all game, because that's gonna keep happening here, right? So that's because of Ninetales' as passive. So what Ninetales' as passive does is every seven and a half seconds, it creates a little circle focus around whoever the unlucky target is and within that circle there's a chunk of damage and then also one of those snowflake icons shows up it's a little hard to see because this thing is blocking it but if i come over here what you'll notice is that little snowflake and you see how i fill up a quarter of that snowflake well that is the freeze passive that alola ninetales has going on so if i were to manage to fill up all four of those ticks what will happen is the pokemon will temporarily become frozen and that's a really big deal with Ninetales' kit, and we're going to be paying attention to that a lot more later in the video here. But pretty much any skill that Ninetales uses causes that to happen, except for Aurora Veil. Vale. Also, Ninetales' boosted attacks cause that gauge to fill up, okay? So we're going to have to pay a lot of attention to that later in the game. But now on to our second starter skill here, which is Icy Wind. And what Icy Wind does is it shoots out a straight line, it pushes a Pokemon a little bit, and it slows them down. Pretty much everything that Ninetales does causes Pokemon to get slowed down, because it's under the whole freezing arc of skills. And then to go ahead and take a look at how much damage each of these skills do, by the way, Ninetales evolves at level 4, or Volpixel evolves at level 4 into Ninetales. But let's go ahead and take a look at how much damage these skills do. So, at level 15, Powder Snow does 1166, and then at level 15... Icy Wind does 1840, and it does it in two ticks. Okay, now let's start with Avalanche, and then we'll start with Blizzard, because this is the combo that a lot of people choose right away, but I don't know is necessarily the recommended combo for Ninetales. So what Avalanche does is you can just shoot out a wall pretty much anywhere you want, and then that wall will explode shortly after. So you can damage somebody by placing the wall next to them, and then the second chunk will also damage them. And it does about 1290 damage, I believe, but it's always going to be hard to see exactly how much damage stuff does because that passive of hers is going to keep getting in the way. But it does about 1290 damage at level 15. And then what's really nice about it is if you pay attention to these snowflakes here, if you manage to get both of those hits off, you get two snowflakes. So pay attention to this core fish here. One snowflake for that initial wall and then a second snowflake for that extra explosion at the end and now on to blizzard and blizzard's a really interesting and powerful skill that i don't know everybody knows how it works because <laughs> i don't see people utilize it this way too often but it's right in the description so if we go ahead and see blizzard plus all on its own it does about 1393 damage the only difference between blizzard and blizzard plus is just a little bit more damage now what blizzard can also do though other than that 1393 damage is if you hit that second chunk of blizzard up against a wall it'll create a circle and that circle does damage over time so so pay close attention here right you're gonna see that initial whoosh and then a second wave is gonna come out right now that second wave if that hits a wall that creates a circle and that circle does damage over time you see that tick 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 now what's really cool is if you use avalanche with blizzard you can kind of create a wall right so i can make a wall right here and then use blizzard and now I'm creating that tick, 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 tick. So if you were to use those together, you can actually do quite a bit of damage here. So let me do avalanche and then pop up. And you'll see over the full chunk of that with our passive combined, we're hitting somewhere in the realm of 5,400 to 6,100 damage. Really just depends on how many of those passives you get off here because her passive at level 15 is doing a significant amount of damage. I would say somewhere in the realm of 673. So that's nothing to scoff at. Her passive does a lot of damage. So in a way, Ninetales here kind of plays a lot like Mr. Mime with his confusion barrier because if you can hit something up against a wall, Holy man, can you do a lot of damage. And then not only that, pay close attention. You see that tick? That's causing constant snowflakes to being hit on everybody within that radius. So that's a really good way to keep that freeze effect going if you're going to try to play a build where you're just always CCing people. And now this can be really strong, really powerful, really disrupting to the enemy team. But what's crazy is that her other set is even more so. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at Dazzling Gleam and Aurora Veil. 
Real quick before we get on to our second moveset here, we have a whole channel dedicated to just Pokemon Unite. It's called Pokemon Unite Guides by Swingpoint. If you're watching on Swingpoint, I'm going to start uploading other stuff on Swingpoint here pretty quickly. So go ahead and check out Pokemon Unite Guides by Swingpoint if you're really into Pokemon Unite content and you want to see more in-depth stuff that I might not cover over on Swingpoint. But with that, let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the video. And now on to Dazzling Gleam and Aurora Veil. And to really understand why these skills are so good, we have to take a look at A9 stats. So let's go ahead and do that. If we go to practice options here and go to stats, here's her kit. She has 6,299 HP. She has 175 defense and 135 special defense. All of these are extremely low. Extremely low. Especially the defense. So, with that in mind, let's also go ahead and take a look at her attacks. So her basic attack does 289 damage. Okay, not that cool. But now let's go ahead and take a look at her boosted attack, and that does 990 damage. So she has a huge boosted attack. Okay? Now, Aurora Veil. What this skill does is it creates a little circle around Ninetales. <laughs> and within this circle, you move a little bit faster while it's active. Whee! Take a look at that. But also, the really big part about this is that you are constantly doing boosted attacks while you are under the effects of Aurora Veil, which is huge. Again, she does 990 damage per boosted attack. But wait, there's more. Something else that's really cool about Aurora Veil, which is why we had to look at her stats, is take a look at this damage I'm about to take from Adino here. I'm hitting, getting hit for 109, right? It's actually going to go up to 112. There you go. But if I'm on Aurora Veil... I'm taking way less damage, way less damage. Now, Aurora Veil reduces damage by 30%. Aurora Veil Plus reduces damage by 35%. Now, when you consider that her defense is really, really low, <laughs> being able to reduce damage taken by 35% is a really big deal. But wait, there's more. Not only does Ninetales take reduced damage while she's within this circle, so do her teammates. So this is a huge buff to the whole team, especially in a big death ball fight, right? Where if you're doing this, if you see Ninetales do this and you're on Ninetales' team, get inside this thing, man. You're taking way less damage. Or if you're on the enemy team and you see Ninetales pop one of these, get away! <laughs> because they're going to start destroying you. <laughs> and if this 35% thing isn't really driving home, go ahead and picture patch notes and your favorite character has a line underneath their patch notes and it says, this character does 35% less damage. Guess what? You would never pick that character again. And that's what Ninetales is doing to everybody on the enemy team. <laughs> Whenever she uses Aurora Veil, they all just do 35% less damage to anybody who's within this circle. This is an awesome skill. But now let's go ahead and take a look at these boosted attacks here. When this thing's going up, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can get about six of those things off, right? So that's basically a thousand damage. So she's doing about 6,000 damage from her boosted attacks on top of the fact that she is taking way less damage. Oh, but wait, in case there's something you do need to know about her boosted attacks that we have not covered yet, but it is a very big deal. Go ahead and take a look at how her boosted attacks work. So what they do is they shoot out, right? And then they hit whoever they're hitting. But if you were paying attention there, you'll notice that when her boosted attacks hit somebody, they spray outward and they hit multiple targets. You see how I'm hitting multiple targets here? So not only is she doing 6,000 damage if she hits all six, she could be doing 6,000 times two or times three or times four, depending on how many different people she's hitting. So if there's a group of four people, she can dish out a total of, I don't know, what would that even be? 24,000 damage just from one of these things? Oh, and wait, wait, I'm not done. You thought I was done? Remember how I said that her boosted attacks caused that little snowflake thing to happen? Here, take a look. You are also freezing everybody faster who is getting hit by this thing because each one of her boosted attacks causes that snowflake thing to tick one more. So everybody's getting snowflakes, which means everybody can freeze here soon. <laughs> There's a reason why people thought Ninetales was so good for a long time. It's because she kind of is. She's the cutest little feather duster in the whole game. Look at that big bushy tail. So that's why people typically go... Dazzling Gleam, Aurora Veil, instead of Avalanche and Blizzard, because Aurora Veil is ridiculous. 
not only for Ninetales, but for everybody else on Ninetales' team. Now, we're sitting here all excited about Aurora Veil, vale, but we haven't even talked about Dazzling Gleam yet, and Dazzling Gleam just makes it even better. So what Dazzling Gleam does is you shoot out an arc in front of you, and whoever gets hit by it takes damage, and they also get stunned. Does 1,033 damage at level 15, but if you go Dazzling Gleam Plus, so instead what you have here is 1,102 damage, which is a pretty notable increase over that 1,030 something, and also that stun lasts longer. I love Dazzling Gleam for a lot of different reasons. So, one, you can just go ahead and stun people whenever you want them, so if you pop one of these and then you stun them, then you can sit there and just start following up with some big old beefy attacks. And actually something to keep in mind, something I talked about in one of our Master Tips videos a while ago is that your basic attacks and your skills can kind of overlap. So if you have Aurora Veil going and then pop pop, and then you use your Dazzling Gleam along with those boosted attacks, you see how they're kind of overlapping a little bit? The animations stack on top of each other. So you're not even missing time to go ahead and cast Dazzling Gleam while you're in Aurora Veil. It is amazing. And now there's so many reasons why a whenever you want it stun can be super useful, right? I mean, and by the way, it's in a big arc, so you can just hit tons of people with it, which is amazing. So you can set up enemy Pokemon for your teammates to combo on, or something I really like doing with this skill is, let's say we're around Dreadnought right here. Come chase me. Let's say we're about to finish Dreadnought, and then the enemy Pokemon's like, look at me, I'm gonna come steal it. And I can just be like, nope. And then that critical moment when Dreadnought has like this much health left, if you can stun whoever's getting close, that gives you a great opportunity for your team to finish Dreadnought without having to worry about Dreadnought getting sniped. And now on to Ninetales as Unite move, and it's pretty straightforward for the most part. It's just a big old explosion. And everybody who's inside of it gets hit for a ton of damage. It also causes a snowflake. If you pay attention there, you got an extra tick from that. But now there is something about this that is a little nuanced and can be very powerful, but you need to time it like perfectly. And that effect is that if you use this ult on somebody who's frozen, you do bonus damage, okay? So let me go ahead and try to show that to you over here. So this guy's gonna go ahead and take 2,981 damage. Now, if I manage to hit him while he's frozen, see how hard that is to hit? You need to hit him like right as they're frozen, right? So let's see if I can get this to pop. And then maybe if my... Oh, there it is. There we go. So you can do 4,107 damage, which is like, I don't know, that's like a 1,200 damage increase about on the alt move itself. But it is really hard to time because these freezes don't last very long. But that's where Mamoswine becomes really interesting. Now that Mamoswine's in the game because it's anybody who's frozen. It doesn't say people frozen by nine tails. So Mamoswine can also cause freeze. Meaning that there's probably also an opportunity for Ninetales to get that extra bonus damage out if Mamoswine happens to freeze somebody right as Ninetales ults. It's honestly probably easier to go ahead and time your ult with somebody being frozen if you're running Avalanche Blizzard, but oh man, Aurora Veil and Dazzling Gleam is just so good. And now on to items for Ninetales, and I'm really excited to talk about this because it's complicated. <laughs> And I love that it's complicated because I can clear it up for you guys. So in order to really understand what items we should pick on Ninetales, let's go ahead and learn a little bit about Ninetales and her stats. Okay? So if we go ahead and we take a look at her stats over on this website called Unite DB, we'll learn a lot. So if we go ahead and take a peek, what you'll see is that her special attack gets very, very high, 955. Also, one little thing to mention is you see there's a big power spike between 3 and 4. That's because she evolves. A lot of these Pokemon do not scale on a linear scale. Like, if you take a look at Pikachu, he does not have this much special attack at level 4. Anyway, just something to know. Like, Mamoswine's a big thing here. You get a big stat power spike at your evolutions. Anyway, that's besides the point. If you go ahead and you take a look at stats here, and you organize by special attack, Ninetales has the third highest special attack in the game right now. Now, I would not be surprised if Sylveon comes on in as like, Sup! But, as of now... <laughs> Ninetales has the third highest special attack in the game. So, that's where you go, okay, is this finally where I get to use Wise Glasses? Is this finally it? Especially since her boosted attacks are such a big part of her kit, can we finally use the Wise Glasses? <sighs> no. No. They still stink. And let me tell you why they still stink. Because there's a good reason for it. So, in terms of items I would run on Ninetales, let's kind of clear this up. I always pick Muscle Band on Ninetales because I'd run Aurora Veil. Vale, because she's constantly hitting those boosted attacks out, right? And that's those are great opportunities for that Muscle Band to go pa 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 You get a lot of value out of Muscle Band on Ninetales. 
And then for the second item here, I like to choose the special attack specs. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail there. And then for the third item here, I go score shield. And that's that's a personal preference. Reason being is I love how score shield opens up different styles of play. It allows you to be tremendously more aggressive in the beginning because you can basically force heal in their face by scoring in their goal. Also at the end of the game, being able to dodge super jump pads and score in their face to get a really big 50 at the end of the game. I love that about score shield. It opens up so many different strategies that you don't get unless you're running score shield. But now what if you want to run another damage item? What do you pick? This is where it gets a little complicated. So with wise glasses here, you get a 7% increase on your special attack and you also get a passive of plus 29 at level 20. And now for the choice specs. <laughs> choice specs give you plus 29 special attack, but also at level 20, every eight seconds, what you'll get is an additional chunk of damage onto one target that does 40% of your special attack plus 60. <sighs> Let's get into why this is complicated. So first off, you will always want to pick special attack specs, in my opinion, over wise glasses. Unless you plan on never scoring, which is not advised. <laughs> You probably want to run the special attack specs. Reason being is that the special attack specs increase your damage by a flat amount every time you score up to six times. And with the wise glasses, they have to go off of whatever your special attack is. So at level nine, if you go ahead and try to take 7% of that, that's going to go ahead and be 0.07 times, what, 416? That 7% <laughs> is only going to give you an extra 29 special attack. But now if you were to get all six stacks of special attack specs, which is very easy to do if you try to play it that way. So you go 16 times six, that's 96 extra special attack. That's a lot more than 29. It isn't until level 15 where you can really start to make an argument that wise glasses are maybe competitive with the special attack specs. But even then, if you have all six stacks of the special attack specs, they're out damaging the wise glasses. So sorry, wise glasses but you still stink and you're not worth it. <laughs> but now wise glasses versus choice specs, which one do you want? That's a little more opinion based. Depends on how you play because the choice specs are a big chunk of damage onto one single target. And the wise glasses are just constant damage all the time on everything. Here's how I look at it. If you want to run another damage item, go choice specs. If you go 1v1 a lot, or if you're really into stealing wild Pokemon, because that extra big chunk of damage you get all at once can be really nice for securing steals on wild Pokemon early game. Wise glasses ain't gonna do that for you. Wise glasses are gonna be really nice if you're using Aurora Veil and you're hitting a lot of targets all at once with your boosted attack. Let's say you're hitting four things at once with wise glasses. Well, then that's gonna out damage the choice specs for sure. So it really depends on your play style. But here's what I run. I run Muscle Band, Special Attack Specs, and Score Shield. You could always run Buddy Barrier if you like Buddy Barrier. I just prefer Score Shield due to the different strategies that open up. But you could also argue that Buddy Barrier opens up different strategies as well. And one other cool thing to note about Ninetales before we end here is if you take a look at her stats, apparently she gets cooldown reduction here according to Unite DB, starting at level 7. And then by the time she reaches level 13, her cooldowns are reduced by 25%. I'll just take their word for it. If you want to play games with me, we do viewer games almost every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. I'd love to see you guys over there. Also, remember to check out the Pokemon Unite Guides by Swingpoint. That link will be in the description down below if you're watching on Swingpoint. And if you're already watching on Pokemon Unite Guides by Swingpoint, thank you so much for being there. And with that, I hope you learned a thing or two about Ninetales. Let me know if there's anything I missed, because I'm sure I probably missed something. <laughs> That's what the comments are great for, letting you guys know more about the stuff than what I covered. And with that, please consider subscribing if this helped you at all. And then I'll see you guys in the next video that we do around here.